Hello there, everybody. Welcome back to Leading Our Own Way. I have an amazing guest today. His name is Mr. Andrew Lovedale. I was lucky enough to share the courts with Andrew back in Manchester before he got a scholarship to one of the most famous colleges in America, Davidson. As you can see in this picture, he's wearing the big red famous uniform. It's famous now. He was part of a documentary called Underrated because he shared the basketball court with one of the most famous basketball players of all time. The best shooter of all time, Mr. Steph Curry. Here's a picture, if you can see it online, with him and Steph fighting for the ball together. Absolutely incredible. This is the show, Underrated, where they talk about their college journey and how they navigated through some tough times and put Davidson on the map. Anyway, goes a lot deeper than that. Andrew stands for so much more. He's created a business called Access to Success. Before I met Andrew, he came from Nigeria, talks about his humble grounds, his humble upbringings. I'll let Andrew go into it because it's absolutely inspirational and fascinating where he took his journey. Uh, however, Access to Success is all about building community, um, providing services for the uh, underprivileged children back in his home country of Nigeria. He still works from America and Heads over there quite a lot frequently every year with the family, sometimes solo. And uh, as you can see here, I'm holding some pictures up of Andrew with some of the children and the families that he supports. This is Andrew now, and there's a little bit more of him and the children that he helps and support. Yeah, absolutely incredible journey. Um, I can't wait for you to all hear Andrew's story and um, where he's going with where he's going with his his amazing journey in life. And yeah. I can't wait for you to hear it. I've always wanted to say this, but we'll be right back after these messages with Andrew. Welcome to Leading Our Own Way. I'm your host, Andrew White, and this is the podcast that unveils captivating narratives of resilience and personal triumph. This podcast is for anyone seeking inspiration and insights on overcoming life's challenges. Follow and subscribe, and then we can lead together forever. Mr. Andrew Lovedale. How are you today, man? I'm doing good, man. Good to see you again after so long. <laughs> it has been a very long time. It yeah, must be easily, <laughs> what, 18 years maybe? Something around that. And we've probably both... on the basketball court. <laughs> yeah, we've both changed a lot. <laughs> Quite a lot. You're right about that. Well, you know, um, Lovedale, thanks for joining me on my journey on creating this podcast, Leading Our Own Way. It's such an honor to have you on here because your story is absolutely incredible. I've obviously watched from afar your journey, and um, I think a lot of people have definitely watched your journey from afar as well. Um, but for those who don't know you, Lovedale, tell us exactly who you are and what you do. Well, um... I'm Andrew Lovedale and friend of Andrew White. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we played uh, basketball together uh, in England um, for Manchester Magic. I, um, I'm originally from Nigeria. Uh, very mm -hmm. fortunate to have done my A-levels uh, in, in England. Uh, and I was one of the very blessed kids who got an opportunity to be raised by a community out of the MHE Basketball Center um, in, in England mm -hmm. and uh, proceeded to um, attend Davidson College in North Carolina here in the U.S. Uh, where I met my wife um, and after you know going to school at Davidson here, uh, I left for France. I played professional basketball in France, played in Switzerland, uh, went back to France and then uh, retired uh, from basketball due to an injury. Uh, and, and my wife and I lived in Cleveland, Ohio. If you know Cleveland, uh, that's where LeBron is technically from. Uh, mm. And uh, lived there for a while and then relocated to Davidson, North Carolina in 2016. Mm -hmm. uh, part of that being because we always wanted to live in Davidson as a family, but also mm -hmm. we had our first son, Osas, in 2015, um, and we thought it was time to relocate. Plus, uh, the foundation that I feel very fortunate to have helped to found um, was growing, and it meant I was traveling a lot to North Carolina, which was our base at the time. And so it made sense for us to move as a family, and mm -hmm. we moved uh, to North Carolina as a family um 
And so Access to Success is, a, is an organization that provides opportunities for children in Nigeria. Uh, our vision is so that each child in Nigeria and person finds a dignified path to success and is empowered to live out God's plan uh, of a future filled with hope for, for their lives. And, and I, get to, I get the unique opportunity of really uh, being a, a witness to children's lives being transformed on a daily basis. Mm. Um, and that's what I do for a living now. Um, and I'm so thankful for, for it. I'm thankful for the journey that includes you that led me to this that led me to this place um but ultimately so thankful for the uh, for the fact that i can be a husband uh and i have such a unique opportunity to uh to raise my two sons osas and essay uh osas is eight um and uh essay is four turning five next Ah. week um and so just truly just truly an amazing an amazing journey Definitely with lots of twists and turns, but um, I would not trade what I do today for for anything else. Oh, uh, so just thankful to to be traveling this journey and to continue to experience life um, at its different stages, uh, mm-hmm. but to try and do that within purpose. Yeah, and we will. We're gonna. We're obviously gonna da- delve really deep into your storyline and where it began and why it began and. Um, but currently, where where do we sit with a with access to its success? Now, paint a picture to how it how big it is because it's grown, hasn't it, over the years when you started it? I mean, I, I know you started it during university, but and it got bigger after your basketball career had finished. But how, what's the structure look like now? How big is it? How 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 big has it grown? Yeah, well, it's uh uh we still say we're growing uh because mm-hmm. that's just kind of natural state of the organization it's a very dynamic organization and we continue to evolve uh consistently uh but we do have um programs that continue to expand based on the need that we see on ground mm-hmm. uh but we serve 250 children daily through after school academy in nigeria uh Beautiful. we serve 250 entrepreneurs within the entrepreneurial community uh, in Nigeria, and um, during the course of a year, annually, we are serving over 10,000 10, people through our outreach our outreach programs in, in Nigeria. Um, and in my position, I get to see the team do amazing work on ground. We have 31 full-time staff members in Nigeria who are wow. doing this work uh, on, a, on a daily basis with 18 part-time, uh, part-time team members who who are pouring into our kids. So there's about 50 people in Nigeria pouring into our kids on a daily basis outside of the volunteers who who come in and help. So what we've been able to do is truly build community um, yeah. where everyone from the parents to the kids to the, the team members are really working hand in hand to ensure that uh, our kids are able to walk that dignified path that leads them to a successful uh, to a successful life. And um, I'm so thankful that I get to be a witness. And on the U.S. side of things as well, we yeah. are very blessed with very generous people who are inspired by the dreams and the hopes of those children that we serve. And they commit to being a part of their lives in in such unique ways, whether it's through the gift of their time, their talents or their treasures. Um, they do so and they, and they give it generously. Uh, and on our team in the U.S., we do have about you know, six of us on the team who are working uh, here out of the U.S. on a more consistent basis, but then with a very good uh, core, core group of people who make up our board, just tremendous servant leaders. So for, from top to bottom, it's been, it's been great to see how we can all come together from the hands that give to the hands that receive, right? And to see the gratitude that flows from, from both uh, and in helping to establish a culture where uh, the dreams and the hopes of the children are really at the the center of it all. So that's that's a lot of what we do today. Um, mm-hmm. and, and I'm so thankful that we are here today. Who would have thought that taking a pair of shoes to Nigeria would turn into something uh, something like this? Yeah, that's incredible. Absolutely incredible. And what does it look like on the U.S. side? Um, is there a team on the U.S. side as well? Yes, there is a team on the U.S. side. We do have a core group of seven board members who help with uh, most of the decision making. Um, mm-hmm. 
And I have this five of us uh, full-time staff members who are working right out, out of the office here in the U.S. Uh, and, and part-time as well. Uh, and then we do have, you know, one or two contract employees who help us kind of handle some of the critical pieces of what we do. So that forms the core team in, in the U.S. Um, mm -hmm. And then uh, just a stream of volunteers, people who volunteer in different ways to support the work that we the work that we do uh, in Nigeria. So we partner with businesses. We partner with, we have ministry partners in churches or, or, or groups who really join hands with us to provide um, not just the, not just the funds that we need, but the expertise that we need to do, to do the work that we're doing on ground. Yeah. Wow. Well, for those who are watching on YouTube and Spotify, uh, I'm holding a picture up of Andrew, with a group of children. I'm, I'm assuming this is in Nigeria, is that correct? Yeah, that's in Nigeria. That family is the Aguia family. I, I know that family very well. Yeah. Ah. Are you still in touch with them today? I am still in touch with them. David, the kid on my, uh, I, I have my, le uh, my left arm around him. Mm -hmm. He just graduated from the after school academy and is about to transition into the university. Wow, fantastic. That was taking about four years ago. Oh, I have another one here that I framed as well. I'll just tilt it because the reflection of the screen. But of that another one there. I call them. I call them my babies. Of course, <laughs> I completely, completely understand that one as well. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. And oh, I had a question in my head. I was going to ask, and I completely it's chopped out my mind now. Um. Oh, I've gone blank. Yeah, because I've watched on social. I've seen pictures of the board meetings that you have. It looks like a huge, it actually looks like a huge team. And, and I, I think it was only maybe in the last year, I think I've seen those type of images. It it, it looks like a full-fleshed business. Um, and it's just grown massively, I think. So I'm struggling to, how do you, how do you work? Are you in contact with Nigeria every day? Yes, I am in contact with Nigeria every day, uh, mm -hmm. my, my typical day, because they are right now, uh, thanks to daylight savings, they are actually five hours ahead. So oftentimes my day begins at 5 a.m. in the morning because they just get into the office and yeah. and sometimes, uh, but I, uh, but we're also at the point of, of the organization where, you know, we're devolving leadership a lot. So mm -hmm. uh, the Nigerian team, they're very capable. So they're needing me less in areas where I used to be more, more involved and and allowing me to kind of do a lot of the strategic work. Uh, yeah, and going forward. Some of that stuff. So, um, but yeah, my day my days start early, and and then the kids have to uh, they have to go to school. But I am in I'm in constant touch with with Nigeria. And like you said, it's like running a business, right? We have uh, everything in place that any business has, uh, mm -hmm. and then we do have uh, the communication tools that we use, which is kind of like the Google Workspace. Uh, we use everything uh, mm -hmm. to to clearly communicate with the team on ground in Nigeria. Um, and and it, it's essentially run the way that you would run a business, right? We have different teams yeah. and different departments and uh, mm -hmm. and you're just kind of helping, you know, develop the capacity of the team leads to help drive, uh, to help drive their teams to ensure that our kids are getting the very best that, and, and which is what they deserve. Absolutely, um, completely. Absolutely. And, okay. Well, let's go to the reason why you created a A to S access to success because, you know, it stems I th it stems from your childhood and 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 where you began. Can you go into the depth of why you started access to success? Join us tomorrow to hear more from today's incredible guests and learn valuable insights to help you lead your own way. Don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you then.